The motorsports world is where legends are made, the unthinkable happens, and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with Jim Beaver. Welcome to this week's General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Well, we are getting tuned up. We are getting fired up. We have the Mint 400 upon us. We are one week out from the biggest, baddest off-road race on the planet. I will be racing there, and uh, we got a lot to talk about in regards to the Mint 400 coming up today. If you're just joining us, welcome to the show. Thanks to everybody tuning in on Sirius XM Channel 211. That is Dan Patrick Radio. Uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in uh, on the Sports Byline Network, uh, the American Forces Network, as well as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those good places you can catch a down and dirty show. Thank you, thank you. If you haven't already, yeah, smash that subscribe button over there on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Keep keep helping us out, showing us the support. But, uh, yes, we got a big show for you guys today. I will be talking Mint 400. Obviously, I'm racing in the race. Yeah, we're going to talk about it a little bit, right? So, uh, to do that, I've got the man behind the Mint 400, Mr. Matt Martelli. He's going to be on the show in hour number two. And hour number two, we also have, we are going, uh, yeah, we've also got some NHRA talk. That's right. I was out on site at Phoenix this past weekend for the NHRA, and I uh, was able to catch up with Alexis DeJoria. Uh, you know what? Uh, she is back behind the wheel of a funny car, and uh, awesome to catch up with her on site out there in Phoenix. We've also got my good friend Steve Torrance. Yes, two-time top fuel champ Steve Torrance. He's going to be on the show this week as well, but our number one, we're bringing the heat. We've got Mr. Rowdy Kyle Bush on the show today. I sat down with him. It's going to take up a couple of segments here. And I got to tell you, Kyle Bush, anytime you get 30 minutes with Kyle Bush, does not disappoint. Kyle Bush going to be on the show making his down and dirty show debut today. Yes, right here. You're in the right place for the best in action motorsports talk radio. And uh, I am really, really excited to bring you today's show. If you got any questions for any of our guests, don't forget, hit me up. It is at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter, also on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. But you want to interact during the show, Twitter, probably Instagram, probably the best two places, probably Twitter mostly. But uh, yeah, I want your fan questions. You got questions for one of our guests? Boom, hit me up. We will get them answered. My promise to you. So yes, prepare yourself. We got a massive show, one of epic proportions coming at you right here today on the General Tire Down and Dirty Show powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode. 
beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, uh, getting things started. Don't forget, we got uh, Kyle Bush coming up uh, here in hour number one. He'll be in, uh, I guess, kicking things off in our next segment. In hour number two, we got uh, Steve Torrance. And uh, Alexis DeJoria, uh, also Matt Martelli with uh, the Mint 400. So, uh, stack show today. Uh, but do uh, once in a while something a little bit crazy on my end happens, which was the case this past, uh, well, this past week. What am I talking about? Just, just a little bit ago on my way to the studio here. Um, <laughs> I I actually witnessed a uh, a shooting and uh, it's kind of crazy, and I, I, you know, it's one of those things. I guess we got to talk about it, right? I'm a radio personality. We got to talk about what's going on, but just crazy. You never, you know, you uh, all the respect in the world to uh, police officers. You never realize, you know, what they go through on a daily basis. And uh, um, obviously, this is not an everyday occurrence. But I, I saw literally there was a, a dually truck took off the front of a of an officer's car. And then uh, officer went up and approached the car, and basically the guy started. There was a little bit of a an altercation where the guy slammed the door on the officer. Uh, officer tried to bust the window out, and uh, and the 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 guy that was driving the car didn't. Uh, he wouldn't open up, and then he took off and he started to drive away, and so the officer tried to shoot out the tires of the truck, and. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, that officer's car obviously was damaged because the the truck had hit the officer's car. So other, two other officers went in pursuit of the suspect, and uh, like I witnessed this whole thing, and uh, it's actually kind of a, a crazy thing to actually see. You watch police shows on TV, you we we all see the Hollywood stuff, right? But to actually see an officer fire his firearm, I mean, there's actually officers. They go an entire career and never fire one bullet. And I think, you know, I think what we see on TV and stuff has kind of made us immune to uh, what actually happens in the realities of being a police officer. Because you watch one of these shows and, man, they're firing guns all the time, right, on TV. Uh, But real police work isn't like that, you know. And actually witness an officer, and he did it rightfully so. Like he had every, he had every right to do it. I would have actually, I wouldn't waited as long as he did, Um, you know. And and there's a whole lot more to this story, right? But uh, I'm just kind of giving you the abbreviated version, you know. You don't want me to draw ten minutes of radio talking about this, but it's kind of crazy. It actually, and my daughter was in the truck with me, and. Kind of shook her up a little bit, and uh, it was just it was kind of an intense scene. And uh, props to uh, all of our police officers, all our uh, well first responders in general, but uh, all of our men and women in blue that tune into the show, man. Thank you guys for what you do. Uh, what I saw today, it was just it's crazy, man. Uh, tip of the cap to all of our uh, law enforcement officers, and I know we do have quite a few of them. Uh, I've got a you know my brother in law, my uncle. Uh, one of my best friends. I mean, I, I've got a lot of police officers that I'm friends with. And, um, man, tip of the cap to you guys. Thank you for everything you do because uh, it, uh, it was a little bit uh, – I don't know who. I don't normally have stories like that, right? I mean, I've got crazy stories we tell, but uh, nothing like that. 
Um, so, yeah, there was that. But uh, I was out at uh, NHRA this past uh, weekend. I went out there with my good friend uh, Steve Torrance. Obviously, you know him and them Capco boys. You're going to be one of our guests on the show this week. I uh, went out there with uh, – uh, you know, hung out with Steve Torrance, got some interviews. Obviously, we'll have him spend some time with Antron Brown. Uh, funny story, though, and a lot of you guys know this now. Uh, you know, Mia Chapman, she's been on the show a bit. She's, uh, uh, I've come on as her agent and her manager, right? She's uh, Red Bull's youngest female motorsports athlete globally on four wheels. Um, phenomenal talent, you know? And so it's one of those, like, you know, I want to show her the other side of motorsports. This is a girl who grew up on off-road, 17 years old. I, I want to show her the other side of motorsports. So uh, we we take her out there to uh, to Phoenix, and I'm there doing interviews, stuff like that. Her and her dad came out. They live in the Phoenix area. And uh, I was hyping up, you know, top fuel cars. So we're going to get you in the water box, Mia. She's going to listen to me. I said, no. I said, you're going to get you're going to get an experience today, you know. And I told her about, you know, I'm like, your lungs are going to be on fire. I said, your makeup's going to be melting off your face. I'm like, it's going to be like somebody punched you in the chest as hard as you possibly could. I said, you got to have earplugs buried in your ears so it doesn't blow out your eardrums. I said, you're going to feel the thunder in your bones. Like, I'm hyping all this up. And she's just looking at me like, you're totally just pulling my leg, right? You're blowing smoke here, Jimmy. So we get down there, we get kind of close, and I think she realized, oh, this is for real. This is for real. And so we get her in the water box, which is, uh, for those of you that aren't NHRA fans, don't know what I'm talking about, uh, you know, they, they, uh, you know, all drag cars, they go through a a thing of water right at the back uh, of staging. They they go through that, and then they go and do their burnout, and then they kind of go back, get staged, boom, lights go. Um, so, you know, we were actually in front, we were right there about 10 feet off the rear tires, these top fuel cars. And, uh, uh, Torrance's is actually Billy and Steve and they were, uh, racing against each other. Um, it went, well, I can't say racing against each other. It was qualifying. Um, but, uh, they went and when they went that thunder, that hit, that kaboom, I turned around and she looked at me and her dad was there and he was laughing and uh, Mia looks at me and, um, you know, we get done, we go back there and I looked at her and she goes, she goes, you weren't lying. And I was like, no, and she's like, everything you said, she's like, I thought you were totally like lying. She's like, it's for real. And I'm like, you can't, you can't even exaggerate a top fuel car. Like, there's no way to even exaggerate. It's just madness. So, uh, yeah, I was out there at uh, NHRA in Phoenix and, um, I was out there on Friday for, uh, qualifying and things like that. Um, I had some rain on Saturday and I wasn't out there for Sunday for the big show, but, uh, I love NHRA. Uh, t- television, and their ratings are actually really good. Television does not do drag racing justice. It's one of those weird motorsports. Like, you have to be there. I don't even know how to explain it. I would say ice hockey is very much the same. Ice hockey is like NHRA. You've got to be there. you got to feel it. you got to experience it. Like, ice hockey, you can watch it on TV, and it's exciting. It is nothing like being at the arena in person. NHRA the exact same way. It is a motorsport for the senses. You see it, you feel it, you touch it. And uh, hockey's the same way. Like you go into the arena, you hear them, bones cracking against the glass. You know, you feel the cold coming off the ice. Um, you see the speed. Like it, to me, there's just so much there. It's a sport for the senses. And NHRA, very, very much the same way. So good times, good times out there at NHRA. Uh, a couple other big uh, heavy notes. Uh, I guess we'll we'll probably get into more of them uh, as the day goes on. We've got uh, yeah, we got quite a bit of news and notes to hit on today. But uh, do want to give a big shout out to uh, James Hinchcliffe. Obviously, we talked last week. He got a ride uh, for a few races with Andretti Autosport. But uh, my boy Hinch, he is one of the best personalities in all of motorsport. And uh, Hinch now signed a deal with NBC to uh, to be a television personality during the IndyCar races that he's not driving. I think this was one of those where immediately he went out of a ride and now all of us go, well, Hinch will get a TV deal, right? Well, you never know what everybody else has as far as TV deals go and, and when they lapse and things like that. And Hinch, he is such an amazing personality. He's such a funny guy. If you never listen to his podcast, you definitely need to. Um, but it, it was so, so rad to see that uh, James, H- James Hinchcliffe uh, got a deal with, uh, with IndyCar uh, to be a TV personality because adding him into the booth is just, it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, 
I'm really excited about that. Other big news coming out of IndyCar, too. It was a big, heavy week for IndyCar news as we kind of gear towards that uh, opening round, though. But Fernando Alonso, um, he, has, uh, he has found a spot for the Indy 500 uh, with McLaren. Um, with the uh, you know Smith Peterson Aero McLaren, I can't I can't even think what are they calling it S P A M spam, uh, but uh, no he's found himself a ride for the Indy 500. So Alonso will be back in an Indy car for the Indy 500. Um, you know I know he's been trying. He was pegged for a seat with Andretti. 